to Ecology of Materials. It's a course designed by Professor Kleinker over here um, and it's for you, the, mostly for the biomaterials students, although some other people might be present. So it starts with a general explanation of what is ecology. It's the system, so here we go. It's the study of the relationships between different living organisms and their relationship with the environment. Yeah, okay, so ecologists seek to explain life processes and adaptations. I could read all of that, but I'm sure you can manage that yourself. Um, it's about keeping the systems in order so that things don't go out of control. Although bearing in mind that they sometimes do that on their own. But for the purpose of this topic, we're more interested in materials. So what has it got to do with us? ecology of materials. So we're talking about when we use materials or produce materials, manipulate them in some way, what are their impacts on the environment, what happens, how does it change when we do that, what does it mean for the future. So here we are, a picture, oh, you can see my mouse, so a picture showing the emissions to the atmosphere, the emissions to the soil, the soil leaches to the water, and that has impacts on biodiversity, which is other things, and also on human welfare at the other end, which is more sociology. So obviously, if you force people to work down mines or something, that impacts on their life. If we dig up fields to make mines, then we get rid of the plants that were there. So if we want to protect the environment, that means we would have to take a whole lot of activities with the goal to preserving the sort of system as it is, which also means partially in normal cases. So we try to have partial places where it's relatively pristine and sacrifice there for others. So it's been in use since the 1970s at least. And um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what that is. So environmental technology, that would be how to return it to this, the way that it was beforehand. Okay, so this is what we've got. What we would have to do with our environmental technology is waste disposal, how to deal with it, getting rid of it. So incineration as an example, recycling, landfill is just throwing it away. Sewage treatment, so that's recycling of water. Um, so that's protection against noise, radiation, things that go into the water and the soil. Means for reducing pollution in other ways, so that's the air, so that's much the same. Um, techniques for renewable energy which reduce pollution in other ways because it just makes it less necessary to use other types of energy. And what else do we have? And general environmental policies with so much social effects. So that brings us to types of technology. So we can have end of pipe technology where we just add something to the end of the pipe. That's why it's called end of pipe. So we have um, whatever it is, a sewage work, which is effectively we're making waste. It goes to a sewage work and it is repaired in some way. So it doesn't change the process in itself of eating and going to the toilet, it changes the waste by minimizing it. But other examples would be the chimney desulfurization on a coal-fired station or a particle filter on um, well, pretty much anything but a flower company, whatever we have, that's making a lot of dust. We can filter the dust out of the air to reduce the impact on the environment or to keep it all in one place. We obviously have to do something with the filter then. But otherwise, we could do production integrated environmental protection, which is obviously the preferred version where we integrate it into the production to make less waste on the way. So um, that would be, for example, using different instead of using organic solvents in a factory changing it for water wherever you can so you don't create the waste in the first place and then if whoops and then if we go further we can think about the product so whatever we want to make 
both the production and the use and the disposal will have impacts on the environment and really if we're going to look at it as a whole it would be better it is difficult because obviously the producer is really only interested in the production has really only a good feel for what is happening in the production but these days they are often forced to deal with recycling and to reduce waste in use so there we go what do we think of the main challenges well then we have a picture so this is all of the things that we could have overpopulation is obviously a major problem climate change is a problem probably a sub problem of overpopulation food supply and water supply equally erosion is caused by bad management biodiversity is again a sub problem mostly caused by too many people so there are a couple of slides in here about population this one is a little bit more positive the other ones are just showing india and africa going up in population massively and other countries not going up quite so much anymore but we can see here that there is a very large growth in the early part of this century and the end of last century and it is now tailing off so we would expect well it's now now we're here obviously now because of corona there will be a dip because obviously less people have been produced in this time and more people have died but um, the total population won't be massively affected by that it will however be affected by this trend which suggests that as people get richer and healthier because we do distribute our richness and health across the world eventually it just takes a very long time to do it, it takes a long time for it to get from the richest countries to the poorest countries what we see very quickly is that the number of children people have declines and eventually we reach a some kind of other slope we don't know what it is yet but it's not as steep as it would have been if we'd followed the exponential curve that was predicted at when in these times at these times they predicted that the population will keep going up and up and up and up but it's obviously not doing that anymore it's curving back down again so here are some natural problems natural disasters so we've got weather um, volcanoes they're all volcanoes so we've got wind we've got lightning here we've got a tornado not entirely sure what that is it looks like an avalanche and they are obviously increased by us so this would be a drought caused by um, people moving the water to a different place there's several of these as places in china and places in russia where the lakes no longer fill where they used to and so there are boats left stuck high and dry far away from the water what else have we got yeah this is a, a lake they're much the same so this is the rlc but there are several here's a so another theme oil spills <clears throat> so the next little bit is about um, population and ecological footprints so how much we need per person so this is per person how many um, parts of land how many acres of land effectively or hectares of land that people need per person and we can see that it goes down to uh, the countries that have slightly more sustainable lifestyles although there are obviously outliers and um, things that are mostly explained by being poor um, and obviously the worst country is the USA and have been for a long time so let me oops sorry I have to go over here um, what they predict here is that if we as we get richer and richer per person we will um, get worse and worse cause more and more impact and then it will go back get better and better and better this is sort of true although if we look here not really because america is one of the richest and still uses the most land per person if we look here this is the amount of carbon dioxide emission per person per year 
and the income and you see that it doesn't really come down it's more of a straight line so let's get do this bit next what we can see here is um, that um, hang on let's start again what we can see here is that environmental concerns are not a new thing it's uh, been a theme for a long time so even in Roman Empire or um, in the South Americas there was a much much work much effort put in to recycle things to get rid of sewage to get rid of waste to uh, make the fields more productive um, so in uh, in the South American cities they recycled the dung of their goats and it was a particularly good system um, it was limited it made it limited the city to a certain size but it was very good for its time um, the Romans used water uh, they brought it to most of Europe many of you what well, many of our students don't come from Europe and they wouldn't have had that but it but it was a different thing um, at different times however as you can see as early as 3000 BC people were channeling water to go to their settlements to change the amount of water coming in and the amount of water going out Oop. so these are some uh, what is this is the sewage in Rome uh, road drainage and um, a cistern to keep water that's uh, toilets and camp toilets in somewhere wherever that is what else have we got so this is an ancient Roman dump uh, it's got layers and layers of rubbish of uh, mostly pots and um, there's about 750,000 tons of pot here on this Roman waste dump of the 4th century as humans or as time went on people got into the middle ages it became more of a focus because people lived slightly more densely and then more in cities and so there were much more uh, water disposal and waste disposal because you ran out of space um, garbage collection in Germany in Cologne I don't know this appears to be a German centered thing probably wasn't really it was a problem that was all over the world moving into the Middle Ages we can see that um, as people were compressed into ever smaller places they had problems but they lost a lot of the technology there that they had in Europe at least so uh, sewage disposal in Europe was a big thing with the Romans and pre-Romans with the Greeks but after that much of the idea was lost waste disposal stayed central although um, I think there was a different problem in Germany so this slide is very German centric wastewater gutters taking things downhill but obviously not great garbage collection in 1353 obviously in bigger cities in other places they, they had to come in earlier or at different times whenever the city got big enough the, the problem arose and obviously um, timber is a big problem in current currently because of firewood in relatively poor countries um, richer countries don't tend to use so much firewood in uh, the Middle Ages deforestation was a big thing in Europe so England and this part of Germany were men uh, were massively deforested for uh, mining for uh, warships in England for buildings and yeah, partly for growing land and that changed the um, landscape forever oops can't change so because they re stopped bothering about it quite so much because they of the way that they lived there was increased erosion of this of the fields there was increased air pollution because people lived in cities and burnt stuff there was uh, more water contamination people got ill from waterborne diseases and there was a lot more smell and noise and things in the cities um, so there were some regulations brought in but it was slow so here are uh, people burning rubbish and 
and trying to tidy up to a certain extent, but it was limited. Uh, later on, there was an industrial revolution in most of Europe, and it got worse and worse and worse. So it, the um, increase in cleaning technology was slower than the increase in population and increase in use. And so um, there was there were increasing air pollution, and it eventually led to change environmental protection to a certain extent, but it was slow. So in, the, in uh, what do they say? So in 1739, Vienna had uh, channeled sewage again. Um, 1842, London, although it already had a Roman sewage system. And uh, yeah, Frankfurt, 1882, so very similar times, but quite late considering. That is the smog, so the, the smog of London Sherlock Holmes, whatever you see, you think of smog, but it was common in industrial cities. Um, as we got into the 20th century, there were certain problems, so it, nature conservation increased, but there were some kind of um, difficulties in that there were occasional things like the right-wing focus movement, which obviously brought a lot of things into disrepute because they became the Nazi party later. Um, so nature conservation did get linked with a racist ideology and sort of home, it's our stuff. Um, so it did put it back for a long time, but then came in the 1960s later in the sort of hippie movement in Europe and America. Obviously in other places longer, but here he's got some example of examples of other things. So both pilots a lot later. Um, the uh, dying forest, which was acid rain, all of those were a lot later. Um, this picture was a big hope. So this was a photograph taken from Apollo 17, and it was hoped to bring home to everybody how fragile our environment is. It worked for a little while. And now we're going to a larger and larger and larger policies to try to get countries to work together more. Because obviously acid rain, for example, was a problem that was the coal that was burned in England contained a lot of sulfur and the acid rain actually rained over um, Nordic countries. And so they exported their waste effectively to other countries and you can do that in the air and you can do it in the soil. Um, so international agreements have to be in place to try to put pressure onto countries to stop doing that because obviously if you produce it and somebody else has to pay to tidy it up, it reduces the incentive to do anything about it. So here are some important dates. Um, it's not current, so it only goes up to 2010. Um, but all of the different things that happen, so sea water, tropical timber, uh, the Montreal Pro Protocol was about the ozone layer. Um, later, it's about climate change more tropical tinder, timber, can't say it, persistent organic pollution. So this is a list of topics for this semester. There is uh, also nanoparticles in there somewhere. We will go through those probably at a fast pace, but we'll go through those. So that's the end for this time. I'm going to close and then I'm going to record another one immediately afterwards on the next one.